Hello, everyone. Welcome to another interview in our distributed experience series. Today, I'm very excited to be joined by John Nugent. John is the sales director with Kane and Boltman, a distributor out of Jacksonville, Florida. John, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Christopher. All right. So you're based in Jacksonville, but you're currently in Georgia. Is that correct? I'm filming from Georgia right now, but I'm a resident of Florida. So I just kind of go throughout the Southeast. Okay. So you got the Southeast on lockdown for us. Someplace yeah. warmer than where I am currently is, is, the, is the answer. So, okay. Right. We, um, as folks know at this point, um, we don't waste a lot of time. We jump right in. You ready to, to start the questions off? Yes, sir. Okay. We start with, with a loaded one. Um, when we talk about customer experience, customer experience can be interpreted in a lot of different ways, and we want people to interpret it in different ways. But what I want to know is, given your experience, your background, what does the term customer experience mean to you? Well, it's funny you ask that because this weekend I got to experience what we would call customer experience. I went to uh, the spring game for the University of Georgia. Uh, shameless plug, that's where I went to school, and they won the national championship. So we wanted to go and see their inter-squad game and see who the new starters were, who the new players were, et cetera. And we went in with digital tickets. We went in with wonderful signage in the stadium, wayfinding, clean concession areas, wonderful seating, et cetera. It was just a great, great, great experience. And I was looking at my wife and I said, I'd love to come back for all the, the regular season games so we could really enjoy this experience. But I started thinking, there's a deeper reason for me to come back to this game or to, to the stadium or to go see this team play. And if you think about it, there were probably a hundred other schools that were having similar games uh, over the last few weeks. And why would people go back? Why would they wanna go back to that same experience? And I think there's a secret ingredient behind the word experience that a lot of people don't think about, but it's innate in human beings. And it's called a sense of belonging. A sense of belonging is so powerful in human beings. And I think as a business, uh, we sometimes forget that we just try to throw out experiences to people and we don't actually tie it into a sense of belonging so that people want to be what we would call a fan. You hear all the time about fans of Apple and fan of other companies, but why? Because they have that sense of belonging that really brings them into the fold and helps build that experience. The thing I'm most afraid of sometimes with experience is if I screw up in the experience, my customer's not gonna uh, enjoy doing business with us and they're not gonna come back. But if I have that secret ingredient where they feel like they belong with Kane and Boltman, then they're a lot more forgiving and they're willing to enjoy the experience, whether it's good or bad, they're still willing to be a part of the experience. And I think that's the secret ingredient is a sense of belonging. Wow, you, you've upped the ante. That, that, that's a, that's a, a really um, rich answer. I appreciate your perspective. Um, that's why I start with that one because it, it gives, gives people a chance to really share you know, what perspective they're coming from. So, so thank you for that. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, the second question here, I've, I've, for the recent guests, I've been modifying this one a little bit. Okay. So when you think about your industry, whose job is it to focus on customer experience? Now, here's, here's the modification. You can't okay. say everyone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, when you think about your industry, if there is one part of the customer's experience that you believe is most important, that you, you would like to impact the most, what part of that customer experience or who would you like to influence the most along that experience journey? Well, for me, I'm, I'm responsible for sales and I'm responsible for the success of my salespeople. I mean, that's my responsibility is to make sure that they're successful. So that's the part of, that's the, the point of impact that I'm most, uh, you know, uh, involved with, so to speak. So that's really where I'm more and more concerned is that point of impact with the customer itself. So it's really incumbent on me as someone who is involved with their success to model experience, to model that level of experience that we want to come through at Canaan Boltman. So I'll give you an example. Uh, we have, a, we have a, a logo, a slogan, a mantra, whatever you want to call it, that we've had for many years. It's called Partners in Business. We really, really, truly believe that our clients are partners in business, and we want them to belong, belong to the Canaan Boltman family. If I model that for my territory managers in front of our customers, 
then that point of impact is going to be uh, so much more elevated because of doing that. So that's really where my concern is, is that initial point of impact to let people know that they're a part of the family, they belong to Kane and Boltman, and that they can never make a bad deal with us. That's very, very important for them to understand. I, I, that's great. So um, you may have just touched on the, the next, the answer to the next question, but I'm going to give you the opportunity yeah. to, to pick this one up. Uh, what is one thing your team is doing to improve the overall experience? Now you talked about modeling the behavior. Yeah. Is there something else that comes to mind in terms of what Kane and Boltman and, and you in particular maybe are doing to impact and improve the overall experience? Right. Well, there's an acronym in our uh, flooring industry. I'm in the floor covering industry. And of course, I'm, we're a distributor of some major manufacturers and it's incumbent on us to go to retailers also other people uh, that are influencers and explain our products to them. So this acronym that we use all the time is PK. PK. Oh, I know product that. I know knowledge. that acronym. And, and everybody uses product knowledge. But the funny thing is the retailers expect product knowledge training, but they have very lowered expectations for it. The reason being is because we typically go in and we just give features and benefits. Feature, which means benefit. Sometimes I've even seen salespeople, not necessarily my salespeople, but other salespeople literally read from literature, read from the back of a sample, something of that nature. What we try to do is weave those features and benefits into a story. What I have learned over the years, I have a corporate training background. What I learned over the years is that if you can weave features and benefits into a story, it will resonate so much better for a client. In fact, storytelling is the oldest form of communication. And that's why it is so powerful with human beings. And that's what we try to do with product knowledge training is to elevate the experience, elevate it to the point where we're invited again, where we're part of their family as well. And they want us to be involved with that whole process of pulling business through instead of just coming in and just dumping information. That's why PKs are so important. And unfortunately, we blow it so often this, in this industry without taking it to the next level. Well, you're not alone. There's a lot of industries where we, my team and I have been on the war path for PKs for years because of what you just described. So I'm certainly glad to hear, hear you say that. Um, and again, I think you've sort of teed up, tee up where we're going next, which is, I, I, I joke, this is our fill in the blank portion, right? <laughs> this is the, I got to just fill in the blank here, okay? Um, our industry needs to do blank better for our end customers. Now, yeah. when I'm talking about end customers, I'm talking about the homeowner. I'm talking about the person who's ultimately working hard to write the check. Um, what does the industry need to do better for the end user? Well, the industry needs to empathize better. Empathizing is very, very important. If you think about it, we really need to understand what we call pain points. Pain points are vital to getting better and creating customer experience. And if we don't go through things through the lens of our clients, we'll never understand their pain points and we'll never be able to resolve those things that we can help. And I'll give you an example. Last week, I had the privilege, I'll call it a privilege. It was a very difficult experience. I was with one of our retailers in the home of an end user. And it was a mom, it was a daughter, it was a neighbor. And we spent an hour and 45 minutes in their home. If you think about it, in our industry, in the floor covering industry, we're a very invasive industry. We're coming into your home. We're coming into your place of business. And we're going to tie up a lot of your time. And we're going to literally go into your master bathroom. We're going to go into your closet. We're going to go into your bedroom. We're doing all that. It's very, very invasive. And I sat there for an hour and 45 minutes and listened to the pain points that I was being shared uh, from this family. And it was so eye-opening for me and it helped me understand some of the things that we needed to do to change and improve the experience so that we could help our clients. So empathize is the quick word. Pain points is the vital process that we have to go through to get there. Now it's, 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 it's really insightful. You're right with that word invasive, right? And, and you know, a lot of other, um, a lot of other people in the, in the home 
related category are very unique in the sense that they have a lot of cases, somebody going into the home, right? Whether it's right. delivering something big or important, whether it's furniture or whatever, but that, that connectivity inside the customer's home, it's definitely more personal. So um, it's, it's, it's both a blessing and an opportunity. I'm sorry, it's a blessing and a curse. It creates a real opportunity for brands if they use it well. So it really does. And I try to encourage retailers to do that, to actually choose someone within their business and call in an order or call in to get measured and then go through the process of having your home measured, order, waiting. Waiting is a big process, you for know, sure. waiting, for product, especially with supply chain the way they are. Yeah. Go through maybe some installation, even if it's a mock situation, but see where those pain points are. And it's an interesting that I'll hear from retailers and they've pinpointed different areas that are these pain points, but then it helps them to empathize with their clients, and then they can ch- turn that around for uh, for for greater uh, process. It, it's a great point. It's a great point. Given the insight you shared so far, I know you're going to have a great answer to this last question. <laughs> so, what is one company, one company or brand that has earned your loyalty? It's won you over with their customer experience. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I, I I kept a little artifact here for me, Christopher, just so I could remind myself. And I really don't have to remind myself. I knew immediately. Uh, when you ask the question who this would be. And I've got this little metal card here. I don't know if you can hear the metal. So it's kind of a fancy card as opposed to the typical card that you get. I'm a lifetime titanium with Marriott. So what that meant is before the pandemic, I was a 290 year guy in uh, Marriott. So they would welcome me and they would say, we know that you're a titanium. We know that you're lifetime, which means that if I don't stay again, for another three or four years, they'll still upgrade me. They'll still treat me with the same level of respect, which I really, really enjoyed. I've been a member there for obviously many, many years. And I go out of my way just to stay in Marriott properties. In fact, my coworkers joke with me because they stay at another brand and they they don't understand why I won't do this. But I'll tell you, my wife and I had our 25th anniversary about seven years ago. It'll be going on eight years this year. And we went to Dubai. We went to the UAE, we went to Dubai, we went to the, um, Abu Dhabi, and we stayed in what was the law, the tallest uh, hotel. It's the JW Marriott Marquis. Now I think it's the third, but back then it was the tallest. So, you know, I'd seen it on TV, everything in Dubai is the, the tallest. So we get there at midnight, it's so tiring. And they say, Mr. Nugent, Mrs. Nugent, we know that you're lifetime titanium. We're so glad that you're here. For the week that you're going to be here, we've upgraded you to this wonderful suite. Now, keep in mind, I wasn't paying. This was all based on points. I wasn't paying a penny. So I get to the room. Our bathtub was full. It had rose petals in it. The The bed had rose petals. I'm a chocoholic. They had a chocolate tray in there on a cart. I mean, I was just so enamored. The next day we went to the executive lounge. We had someone as a server, breakfast, tea, which was lunch, dinner, drinks, everything taken care of. It was an amazing process. People asked me, what was the food like in the UAE? I said, I have no idea. I spent so much time at the hotel because it was such a wonderful experience. Well, yeah. here's the thing. Our last evening, what people don't understand is the, the, the American airlines don't get very favorable times in and out of the airline airports there. So our flight was at midnight. Well, I get a late checkout, which is 4 p.m. Most people have to check out around 11, maybe noon. I get to 4 p.m. So I went to the front desk and I talked to the general manager and I said, would you mind? Would you mind if we stayed in the in the executive lounge until about eight o'clock tonight? That way, we don't uh, have to stay out on the street or do anything else. And he looked at me and said, "Mr. Nugent, what time is your flight?" And I said, "Well, it's midnight." He said, "I want you to keep your room as late as you need it." I was blown away. Think about that for a minute. This is a suite. It probably went for over a thousand dollars a night. He was willing to forego another night's uh, money coming in just to satisfy someone who was just asking for a favor. All I was asking for was to stay in the executive lounge. You better believe I wrote all kinds of reviews on TripAdvisor, on Marriott, everything. 
that level of sense of belonging is huge, absolutely huge. I feel like I belong with them because of the way they've treated me over the years. And that's why I keep coming back. And that's the whole point behind the sense of belonging is it does keep us coming back. And it makes us even more forgiving when things do go wrong because things always go wrong. Don't they? Yes, There's always going to be something that goes wrong. But if we have that sense of belonging, then we look at things through a little bit different lens. The experience is even more meaningful. Instead of shopping for experience, now I'm tied into an experience. And I think that's really important for business people to understand. Well, I love how you how you brought that all back together. I appreciate I appreciate you giving us that full arc. John, this has been a great conversation. Thank you for sharing your perspective. Um, one thing is for certain, I definitely want to travel with you sometime. I want to be part of that experience when you check into a Marriott and see their eyes light up. So um, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Christopher. It's been a real privilege talking to you. Thank you so much.